Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to another tech video and another video sort of chronicling my experience with Apple's M1 chip, specifically in the Mac Mini. And for those of you who don't know, a little while ago I did a video talking about the base M1 Mac Mini and my first impressions on it. You can actually check that out right over there. And things were favorable. I'll summarize it in a minute, but there were a few things about it that just kept me from being able to fully leverage the power of this chip especially as somebody who does video work on a daily basis. So, I bought a second one, and here's why. Now to preface this video, I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail with the base model Mac Mini. If you want that, you can head over to that video that I mentioned earlier, but I am going to sort of talk about the limits that I ran into with the base model and why I ultimately upgraded. But to start out, why on earth did I buy a second Mac Mini? Well, what it came down to was the fact that my main mobile work was being done on my iPad Pro, and it was completely capable of doing everything I needed it to, and that meant that my MacBook Pro spent most of its life in a 12 South Arc stand as a desktop. It didn't really end up being used as a laptop too much, and even when it did, the failure of the keyboard consistently was the biggest reason why I hated using it as a laptop and ended up ultimately shifting everything over to my iPad. So, Knowing that, I figured, let's see what the trade-in value of my MacBook Pro would be. And with that trade-in value of the MacBook Pro, I was able to actually get the spec I wanted of the M1 Mac Mini and also repair the broken screen of my MacBook Pro, my iPad Pro, rather. Um, <clears throat> that's a story for a different day. Yeah, I broke the screen of my iPad Pro and uh, I was able to get it fixed with the trade-in value and still get a Mac Mini. Pretty nice. So that's more of the how. The why is a bit of a different story, but the why is kind of what I mentioned at the start and also what I talked about in the previous video, which is memory and storage, because those are the two main things that really cropped issues up for me when I was using this as a daily editing machine. The base model Mac Mini has 256 gigabytes of storage and eight gigabytes of RAM, and my upgraded version has 512 gigabytes of storage with 16 gigabytes of RAM. And to briefly touch on storage, if you're the kind of person that saves a lot of things to thumb drives, external storage, or you just don't save a lot at all, especially for you MacBook Air and MacBook Pro users, 256 gigabytes of storage is more than enough, especially with how advanced cloud storage has become and how big little USB thumb drives have become. I would say that if you're using something like that, it is totally fine to go with 256 gigs of storage. In fact, the base model Mac Mini that I have here is now working as my media server for the home, which means that it is exclusively pulling data from external both USB and network drives. So the 256 gigs built in is completely fine. However, as a video editing Mac, the upgraded version that I have is kind of, it's a requirement basically to have that larger amount of storage because of the programs I need to have installed, the assets I need to download, the plugins I need to run, and it also gives me space to throw current projects onto the actual internal drive to gain the benefits of the speed of those internal drives, or internal drive. Anyway, either way, it's better to have larger if you're doing video editing just like it's better to have a larger amount of RAM when you're doing video editing. Now, I mentioned in my previous video that the eight gigabytes of RAM in the base model Mac mini meant that it was a swap king, which meant that it was constantly dumping things from RAM into the storage drive in the machine, and that that could wear on the drive. Not really a big concern for me, considering that I'm pretty sure the life expectancy of the drive will outlive the machine, but it's still not great. The 16 gigabytes of memory, oddly enough, still does swap, but it does it way less, and it is easily, easily something that you will notice immediately if you've experienced eight gigabytes of RAM versus 16, because the performance is huge. Now, it is kind of odd to say that there was a huge performance difference just by adding an extra eight gigabytes of RAM. Obviously, there'd be some performance improvement. Doubling your RAM would definitely do that, but the kind of performance difference I saw wasn't just from upgrading the RAM. It actually had an effect on a larger portion of the system. And a lot of that comes down to the way that Apple approaches the memory usage of this chip versus how other manufacturers deal with RAM. So most of you familiar with computers would probably recognize something like this. It's a dim stick. It's actually a smaller so dim stick. It's an old one. It's a gigabyte of RAM. And uh, it's a pretty standard little thing. You've got chips on here known as dims and this will actually have your RAM on it, and then it just plugs into a slot 
and that's it. Now, even on the Intel-based Macs towards the later portion of their lives, Apple was still approaching the RAM styles differently by soldering the DIMMs directly to the board. This meant that there was no chance, or rather a lower chance, of failure due to port issues, which is actually something I'm dealing with on an older Mac of mine, but that's a different topic. And it had direct access to the board and the traces straight to the CPU, which meant that it was generally a bit faster, as fast as the RAM could go, without having to pass through a port. Now, the way Apple approaches it on their M series chips, and actually their A series chips in the iPads as well, is by using what they call a unified memory architecture. And this means that the RAM is actually directly alongside, basically almost a part of the CPU. The benefits to this approach to memory include little to no latency when it comes to accessing memory, allowing memory to not only be a part of the CPU's pool, but also the GPU's pool, and also means that there are, again, even fewer points of failure for the RAM. Now, yes, you can't go and upgrade it later, which is a bit of a bummer, but when you build it right the first time by getting something with a larger amount of memory, you're not only benefiting because the CPU has more memory to pull from, but you're also benefiting because the GPU has more memory to pull from, just like I said earlier. And this is why it has such a dramatic effect over the entire system. One of the tests that I run on any machine that I'm looking to use as an editing machine is a render test. And it's a render test of my Guess the Anime series. If you wanna check those out, by the way, they're right over there. But the reason why I use that is because those videos are way more complex than most people think, because there are about three to six different elements all running at the same time, two video files, one of which is 4K, as well as three to four CG layers with text, some animation, depending on what it is, transitions, and constant background noise sound effects. Now, the video I chose to use was actually a video that I had already done on my MacBook Pro. This video is 29 minutes and 16 seconds, and I ran it on the MacBook Pro, like I said, I ran it on the base model Mac Mini, and I ran it on the upgraded Mac Mini. And I expected the Mac Minis to be about the same because, well, it's the M1 architecture. And I couldn't have been more wrong. So, my MacBook Pro with an i9 and the upgraded storage and the upgraded RAM, 32 gigs of RAM, might I mention, and the upgraded graphics card inside, cranked this video out in 31 minutes and 26 seconds. Not bad. Still longer than real time, but whatever. The base model Mac Mini cranked it out in 26 minutes and 14 seconds. Less than real time and faster than the upgraded MacBook Pro. That's really awesome. And now, place your bets in the comments. What do you guys think? Don't, don't cheat, pause it here. Guess what you think the M1 Mac Mini with 16 gigabytes of RAM did. Oh wait, go ahead. You done? Okay, you're all wrong. It did it in 18 minutes and 12 seconds. It cut off even more time just by doubling the RAM. That's awesome. So this could literally be the here's why in the title. That much of an improvement in render times just by upgrading memory. But there's another reason, and it's a reason that I've actually gone with larger amounts of memory in every Mac that I've owned, and why I recommend more memory on anybody who asks me what they should get for their Mac. Macs as they stand now, unless you go with the Mac Pro or the 27 inch iMac, cannot be upgraded after the fact. My parents have a 21 and a half inch 2013 iMac with 16 gigabytes of RAM, and that is the most it could handle. And even back then, when eight gigabytes of memory was more than enough, I recommended they get 16, and it was because you can't upgrade. And the benefit was that the machine lasted from 2013 till 2021 with zero issues, and was able to not only get consistent updates, but get them consistently and perform well while doing it. That's pretty awesome. And the same thing applies to MacBook Pros, MacBook Airs, and of course, to Mac Minis. If you can't upgrade it later, get what you need now. And well, I didn't do that when I bought the base model one because I just needed something to get that butterfly key switch nightmare of a MacBook Pro out of my life. And now that I have that MacBook Pro out of my life, I had the money to get the one that I needed and I could not be happier. It slid right into my setup with nothing else needed other than a simple time machine recovery, and it flies through my renders. And I could not, as I said, and I will say this again, could not be happier. So it's kind of hard to make a video like this and not sound like a fanboy because this is huge. Systems that can be that greatly affected in performance by simply upgrading the RAM could be a game changer for the long run. 
And really, the 8 gigabytes of RAM model is fine for general use, don't get me wrong. But if you really want to get the most out of your machine and have it last the longest, especially considering this is a first gen M1, like this is probably going to have the shortest lifespan of any Mac that has come out from the ARM based systems, this will probably still get a longer life than the base model. So if you want to have it as long as possible, get the 16 gigabyte RAM version. So yeah, to summarize, I got two Mac minis and that's why. I needed something that could perform what I needed reliably and have enough memory to hold its own for a long period of time. And then this one can retire and become my media server. And both of them allowed me to get the nightmare of the 2018 Butterfly Key Switch MacBook Pro out of my life. So for both of those, I'm grateful. But that's why I bought them. And I think that's why if you go to look for an M1 Mac Mini, you should get the 16 gigabyte of RAM version, even if you get the base storage option. But otherwise, that's been it. Hopefully I will have a few more things to cover with these as I go on. I do have a fun video plan talking about living life exclusively on Apple Silicon. So make sure you subscribe for that. But otherwise, that's it. I'm gonna go put my desk back together because now anytime I do a video like this, I have to take two workstations apart instead of one. But either way guys, make sure to like and subscribe. Check out the comment section, see if you guys got even close to the render times and leave a comment letting me know what you guys think. Apart from that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure to be there and have a good one. Thank you.